I made this gigantic MFT style track saw cutting station. I'm going to make a picture frame for this painting my wife made. That's Miso and Bonito, our cats. I plan to use this thing mostly with the Incra fences, but you can use all sorts of dogs, um, 20 millimeter dogs. I've set up my Incra fence here on the 45, and I'm going to make a test cut. This is actually the first cut on this table, and I'll take it over to my workbench, put a light behind it, and compare it to my square here. It's a 45 degree square, and it looks really good. So I'll go ahead and start cutting one end of each of these pieces. These are basically guaranteed to be 45 because these dogs are very accurate. And to cut the pieces to length, I want to use one of these shop stops. I'm using an off cut to hold the end of my miters so that they don't get trapped behind that uh, stop. And uh, in order to clear the fence, I'm using some of these one, two, three blocks. So that'll add six inches here. And I can make a cut and measure. And now that I know where it's cutting, I can move the ruler here to indicate that against the stop. So I'll mark a sort of no-go line, which is my finished length, and I'm going to put my stop a little bit long. So I think here I'm gonna be trying to cut it to uh, 21 inches when my final dimension is actually 20. And I just wanna check and see how accurate my ruler is on that anchor fence. So here I can see that I am about a 16th of an inch short. So I can adjust the scale by a sixteenth of an inch and move it in just a hair, still not to my final dimension, but uh, let's check and see the length on this cut. And if it's looking accurate, which it is, then I can proceed to my final lengths. So first I'll cut both of the long pieces. And now the magic of the Incra fence system is that I can just move my stop directly to my finished length for the short pieces, and I can be very sure that it's gonna be the right length. So I'll cut both of those short pieces. So if you've never used an MFT top before, the whole point here is that these dog holes are drilled in a very precise grid. So they're all very square to each other. So in order to check if my 45 looks accurate, I can line up the two pieces against the dogs, which are guaranteed to now be 90 degrees apart from each other. And you can see that there is essentially zero gap between my pieces there. So it's cutting really nice 45s. I've actually never been able to do that um, on my job site table saw before. So I'll set up my router table now to uh, create the rabbit or rebate for the actual glass. And I'll set the height here using a little edge ruler. These little gessum uh, hold downs are pretty cool. They kind of take a lot of your effort off of holding towards the fence and down. Um, they do a good job. I'll use one of these strap clamps to check my fit here and look at my miters. And I actually dropped this piece on the floor while I was routing it, which compressed the edge a bit. It looks pretty bad. So I'll take that back over to the table here and just shave a 32nd of an inch off of both of the long pieces. And of course now, because I'm going for a very tight fit with the glass, um, the glass will no longer fit. That needs to be, you know, a 16th of an inch longer. So I put the uh, router table back together and shaved off a little bit off of both of the short pieces and the glass actually fits. Not looking too shabby.
So once again, I'm going to use hide glue to glue this up because it's sterile and I like the taste. That strap clamp does a great job. And I have a great supply of hot water to clean up any of the spill out. I'm going to cut some splines using a flat toothed uh, saw blade here. And I'm using a sled from the King's Fine Woodworking Channel. Definitely recommend this sled for splines. It works really, really well. And you can get really nice looking, uh, you know, evenly spaced, double, triple, whatever kind of spline pattern you want. That'll do it. I'm going to use a piece of wengi here, which I will resaw some thin strips of. This bandsaw is a relatively new uh, tool for me. It's a, still a little scary, to be perfectly honest. So I'll use my hand plane to bring this down to close to a perfect fit. And once I'm, you know, almost there, I'll, I'll bring it to a piece of sandpaper on the bench. And then I'll measure how big I need these splines to be. And I want them to be a little oversized, so I'll mark out my splines to go cut. And I'll bring it over to the bandsaw. And I'm kind of cutting almost to the point where these detach and then just snapping them off. And this helps avoid losing these pieces in the dust collector. It also probably helps avoid losing my fingers. And I was actually a little nervous to cut the last one on the bandsaw, so I brought it over to the bench and used a handsaw. Definitely a little bit safer. So I'll use hide glue for these as well. And uh, the trick with these splines to making them look good is to push really hard when you're getting these to seat. Because if you have a gap between the spline and the uh, actual frame, it's going to look really bad. So this flush cut uh, pull saw has no set on the teeth. So you still can dig into the wood a little bit if you're not careful. But if uh, you hold the blade up against you know, the surface of whatever you're trying to cut flush against, it works pretty well and you don't get any of the uh, you know, destruction of the surrounding material that you get with a saw that has a set. So to make this really nice now, I'm laying out some pressure sensitive adhesive backed sandpaper on my big cutting mat and I will go over pretty much every flat surface and sand everything nice and flush and flat. I'll bring it back over to the router table to add a chamfer on the outside and also on the inside. I think that looks pretty nice. Note the change of directions when you go to an interior. You always want to be going you know, you don't, you don't want to climb cut. There's plenty of videos about that if you are interested. And I'll use a very flat chisel to continue the chamfers into the very corner. It's not looking too bad. I'm adding just a quick shellac finish. I usually don't spend too much time on the finish for picture frames that are going in my own house. Really mostly just excited to get this up on the wall at this point. It's always a good sign when the glass fits, especially at this stage. And here it is in its final resting place. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.